All right, folks, here is our candidate for today. This is a 2001 EasyGo TXT. We are going to be installing a brand new battery tray in this one. As you can see by this one here, we are uh, beyond rotted, actually. The battery tray rotted out and the customer at some point had, I guess they took the batteries out and they put in a battery tray thing made out of plywood and it obviously <laughs> is not holding up. So we're gonna go ahead and rebuild the new tray for them and get this battery pack properly installed so it's safe. It's about ready to drop through the cart. So let's get started. So this will be a pretty straightforward job. We're just gonna disconnect the battery pack, remove it from the cart, and then try to get the battery tray out, hopefully in one piece. But nine times out of 10, that doesn't happen that way. Hey, full disclosure, guys. The battery tray has already been built. Let's put us in tow. I'm gonna get all this jerry rigging out of here. All this stuff the customer will get back. I'm gonna throw it in the bag well. This cart has needed this battery tray replacement done for a few years. Wow, I could smell them batteries. They stink. So, I don't know how easily this part, that's not gonna come out easily for me. Okay, so let me get this strap off of here first. pull it out here and we'll just get it out of the way after the fact. Well, the batteries are a little dry on this one. Not terrible, but bad enough. Just looking at the condition first. Okay, yeah, these they definitely definitely need water, which we will get We'll do all that stuff after. Let's get this thing out first. We are in tow mode. We're gonna be replacing a couple of these cables. See, I know this. I know this battery tray is bad. I've been telling the customer that for a couple of years now. Okay, we have all the same size doohickeys here. Let's get all these battery cables off and I'll get all the battery nuts picked off first too. Looks like we have a little bit of a rodent issue under here at some point. Take the battery cables off and throw them in the glove box there. Looks like we have a broken wire for something. We'll have to figure what out, figure out what that's for. That battery cable is shot. We might be able to just re-terminate it. Just throwing them in the glove box there. Battery terminals bolts are going in the other side. If these battery terminals are on these cables, I should say, the ends are bad, we're going to we're gonna try to clean them up, but if they're really that far gone, we'll just replace the end or the entire cable itself. Well, we're not to that point yet, so we'll just hold off on that. Oh look, here's the uh 
There must be more than one strap on this, I bet. All right, so now, now we gotta cut these zip ties. I wonder if these are gonna just fall right through. Well, not yet. I bet you they're gonna start dropping out once I start lifting the batteries out. Now this cart was in storage. We didn't get a chance, oops, didn't get a chance to get it washed before we brought it over. I wanted to get this battery cage deal done first. See, these are interstate batteries. I don't see a, whatchamacallit on here, a date. So I basically told the customer it's time to change this battery tray out. I said, or I wasn't going to store or work on the cart anymore. Because all it takes is for this battery tray to drop out while I have it, and they come back and say, now I'm not saying that they would say this, but you know, they come back and say, oh, it was fine when you took it. What'd you do to it? You know, that kind of crap. I've had that happen to me in the past. Now look at how much water is on there. Okay, there's the batteries. Here's a nut. Are there any washers on there? No, okay. Boy, this is gonna be exciting, guys. Ready for the big reveal? Okay, and it's a sheet of plywood. Whew, this stinks. Oh, look at that. Boy, that smells. Well, most of the work's done for us, guys. Pew. Looks like they, or it's over time, the battery tray has basically already completely fallen out of the cart. So what we basically have to do now, let's see here, it's, we're gonna have to zip tie some of these wires up and out of the way. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be able to get the angle grinder in here and we'll cut this, these back supports. They're only, do the only thing on the back that holds this, this in. Yeah. And you can see this is inch and a half angle. So we're only a half inch smaller. The front rail is really not in bad shape. It's, I mean, it's obviously it's shot, but it's not in bad shape compared to the rest of it. And then we'll get in here with the Sawzall and cut out the front. And if I can cut the, get these bolts out, this is always the hardest part on how to get these out of here. The front is the hardest part. The back is easy. There's nothing really difficult about the back part. It's getting the front part out, the part that's under the directly under the seat there, under the seat hinges. The rear bits are fairly straightforward. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but these, these two and a half inch uprights here, this is a very easy part to get out because all I gotta do is just cut it right at the frame rail here. Not cut the frame, but just cut the, this bar off at the frame rail and then weld in the new bit. Because, I'll show you, let's grab a measuring apparatus. The, from the bottom of the frame, we're gonna just guesstimate here. It's just over, to the top of the frame is 13 inches, roughly. So our pieces are an inch shorter than these. So when we cut them off, we're gonna weld them right off that, right at that cutoff point. Uh, but like I said, the hardest part about this gig is getting this part off here. This one's all right. I wanna get this up and out of the way because I don't wanna have it accidentally fall down and I end up cutting through it. So that's up. Okay, so this one has, does, this one doesn't have a mechanical forward reverse switch right here. Some of them do. Come around this side. This cart is all wet because, oh yeah, it's been raining again. Four days in a row it's been raining. 
Actually, I think it's been longer. Let's see if we got enough juice in our battery here to do this. Trying not to cut through the frame. I'm not cutting through the frame, am I? No, I'm just tight. Just tight in here. Well, I can't get in there any further with that. I'll have to, as you can see, I've gotten close, but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Okay, so I got another one on this side. And it's gonna be harder because now I have to, the only way I can get in here enough with the grinder is to go in at this weird ass angle. Showers of hot spots. No, I can't. You could use a sawzall. I mean, that would work. But, you know, put my welding gloves on. That'll help my arms from being scorched by molten. Molten lava metal. Now oh, it'll help. I mean, I'm still gonna get scorched, but it'll help. Okay. How far did I get? Pretty darn close. Okay, I'll have to finish the rest off with the Sawzall, I think. Let's get the Sawzall. So what I like about this saw is it's variable speed. So I can get in here and... Finish it off without really much effort. Oops. All right, so... I'll get it from this end, maybe. Sometimes you gotta get in at obscure, obscure angles. You know, you can't always get everything at the angle you want. Let's see if I can get this out of here now. There we go. Okay, I'll get the light kit wiring out of the way so we don't cut it. Now the only thing on this side of the cart you have to worry about is the throttle, the throttle uh, cable. Now, let's see if we can. Okay, these frickin' saw blades are awesome. These Milwaukee blades are amazing. They really are. Now I gotta go on the other side. Call me a fanboy all you want. I don't really care. I just know what I know works. Gotta watch on this side the brake cables. the sheet on that one. Okay, so now we are about ready. I 
break this up into small sections, I think. Just bend it, it'll eventually break off. It's dead enough to break, so, okay. I'll put a little electric uh, liquid tape on that brake cable so I don't allow water to enter. There's one bit. Here's two bits. There's another little bit here. So yeah, there we go. Now, like I said, we just have to work at the back's done. We're good there. I'll just hit it with the die grinder on the Dremel or something just to clean up the little bits of metal so I have something good to weld to. But now we just got to work on getting some of this nonsense out of the way. Like that blade has been torched. That blade, the tip of that blade's toast. That's okay. I got done what I needed to get done, and that was to basically get that out of the way so I have something to weld to. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have any cables on this side to worry about other than this one, which we're gonna cut the zip tie out of the way. This is the um, throttle cable. Well, I, I say cable, but it's a wire. gonna bend that down like so see and what I need to do is basically I need to cut some of that bolt and what that's gonna allow me to do is that bent back out of the way we don't have to take those off we could leave them on there they're not gonna hurt anything. They're gonna get painted anyway. This Cutting this bolt off is going to allow us uh, to get the new frame installed easier anyway. I'm gonna have to change the bit, the bit I bet. Yeah. Let me uh, let me change my blade on this saw so I can get in there with the tip of the blade. Okay, now I can be able to use the tip of the sawzall. It's the most dangerous part of the blade too because it's so unsupported. Make sure, why is my lens fogging up? It's humid. Give me more, more juice. I don't have to go all the way through it. It's a hardened bolt, so that's why it's so hard. To... There we go. And then just tap it and the head of the bolt will fall out. There we go. See, now we have a nice flat surface we can hit with the angle grinder and a flap disc, clean that up, and then we can weld the cage in. So let's just see.
how this is going to work out here. Oop. Put in right way around, dumbass. Dumbass. Okay, so it is wider. The uh, wires for the electric motor, we are going to tweak them up a little bit so they're out of the way. Okay, so the frame, we are basically trying to get it so it sits up here. So we're going to have to, well, sometimes you might have to do this, guys, but this part here of the front of the, the new cage that you build, sometimes you got to lop that off right here, this section, so it'll slide in far enough, and then the little lip that's left, you can weld it to the existing cart frame you're able to get the entire thing out, which is usually unlikely. Okay, so I'm going to take a second here, regroup, and then we'll come back at it. All right, so I don't know why the lens is fogging up all of a sudden. I think it's just because of all the humidity. But what I did was I cut out in this in here, down in here was that little bit of scabby metal that was left from when I cut the tray out, and I cut it down to the actual the original frame there. So we might be in good shape here now. So what I can do then is basically, let's see if we can get this to, whoop. we're gonna put it on the frame there. Nope, see it doesn't wanna go in. Okay, so the frame, this frame's just a little bit wider than the factory one, so that's, that's one thing to keep an eye out for. All right, so I took a little bit of a break. I came back. It looks like uh, the camera is not fogged up anymore, so that's good. And my glasses aren't fogged up anymore either. So that's even better. All right, so I'm gonna take this out of the way. All right, to rectify this problem, I'm gonna cut off the grinder. Actually, I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to whack it in a little bit with the grinder. I need to get... I just realized I don't have any flipping earplugs in my earballs. Let's get some earplugs in my ears because my ears are going to hurt. They already do. I haven't charged it in a while. I only have... I only got one bar. So we're getting dead. So now that that is bendable, what I'll do is I will cut, I'll do the same cut on this side. Can you see what I'm doing? Probably not. There. So I'm gonna make that same cut here. Hopefully the grinder will last long enough. almost dead. I'll tap that in like so. Actually, I'm not going to cut that. I'm going to sand it because what I want to achieve is the ability to control that a little better. And I don't feel that I could. Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think so there, Chief. There we go. I knew that wasn't sitting on there correctly. I can always tell. You always know your own tools.
And again, what I'm taking off is minimal compared to what I would end up taking off if I were to cut it. I don't want to take all of this off. All I want to do is just shave this down until it slides in. And then I can clean up our edge in here. I, I probably should clean that edge up and see how much material comes off. But you can probably hear the grinder is, it is struggling a little bit because it's, the battery's almost dead. I, I, I want to use this one as much as I can though before I go switch over to the not so portable one. Let's see what we got here. Good spot there. I'm gonna try to do the front face here. I'm gonna have to switch over to the plug-in one and charge this battery up. See, this is always the hardest part, is because there's not a lot of working room in here. how she fits in here now. I'm probably gonna have to cut some of this end off, I think. I think I might have made my, oh, maybe not. Actually, that seems to fit pretty darn good. There we go. Okay. It seems to be good. It seems to be sitting in there just right. Actually, I think it's sitting in there way better than it did with the factory setup. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my rear brackets here. See, this is exactly the same stuff that they use. I think they might use something a little thicker, but, but it's the same crap. Okay, so we'll get one side tacked in and then we'll get it then we can work on the back pieces, and that's just a matter of zzz, welding that right across. I'm just gonna <sighs> now all the burning paint is gonna stink on this thing. Okay, here we go. These are just tack welds. that stinks. Might have to open the door. I don't want to leave my skin exposed to that too long because that's UV. All right, let's give it a... Uh, I'm not gonna... No, I can't. What am I doing? I still have to get the back pieces in. Uh, where is the one? I have to clean the back bits yet. I just wanted to get this in so I can make my adjustments with it in place. Okay. Going with our flap disc. Lose the welding helmet. Get the safety glasses. Boy, I just had a stupid moment. So why don't I just move the thing? Which is what I'm gonna do. Instead of putting, you know, I have these brain fart moments every once in a while. All right. Hmm. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So instead of trying to utilize the existing battery strap mounts, I'm just going to clean a section off of the frame and weld to that section instead. 
check. I'm gonna get it welded in place and I'll show you this once I get it welded. Oh yeah, yeah. Can't believe I had a brain fart like that. I'm just gonna tack it in because I want to see if it's gonna work where I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here. Uh, I hope I'm hoping that it works, and I think it will. But like I said, I want to just give it a quick tack first because if it does, then I don't remember. See, I don't, don't remember exactly how I've done it in the past, so. Give it a tack. Okay. Give it a tack. Without shorting out the welder, of course. Because what I'll do is I'll drop a battery in after it cools down a tad. And I'll see if this is going to work for me. I think it will, but I gotta make sure before we weld this solid. All right, so we'll let that cool and I'll drop the batteries in and see if they fit. So I went ahead and let this cool down for about 15 minutes just because I didn't want to melt the side of the battery. And it looks like it's gonna work. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here you can see this, I don't know if you can see, but here, let's get on this side. Maybe you can see a little better. So right here, this flap here is where the existing battery hanger, uh, tray hanger goes down to the old bracket or down to the old tray. There's a bolt in there that I just took out and I was going to put this plate up behind it, drill a hole and ram that screw back in. And then I thought, um, no. So we moved it over. I don't know why I didn't just do that anyway, because you know, that's obviously much easier to do anyway. Nonetheless, this is going to work fine. Uh, the batteries fit in here, no problem. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, Give her hell and melt them together. Uh, get this all melted up here. Get that melted down there. I'll try to get in behind there somehow and uh, give it a nice, nice strong weld. But the battery sits in there in every position perfectly. There's no problems. I just have to get also down in here and weld that a little bit better. But that's we're pretty much almost there, guys. All we got to do now is just get this all welded in place. Let it cool down. I'll wipe everything down with the. Uh, little bit of acetone. I also have to mark out for our center positions here uh, the for the battery tie down bracket. So we'll get this all taken care of over here and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so it's been, no, oh, a little while. And probably a good half hour or so. And I got the, uh, the cage welded in. My welds are not that pretty. You know, they're not the greatest. That one's kind of gloppy. Uh, there's a couple of them that look really good, but, you know, for what this is and how old this card is, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's 18 years old. It's a 2001. So I don't really think it's all that much of a problem, considering this thing is probably on its last leg anyway. So now that we got this all done in here, we're going to give this a quick shot of primer paint. Uh, well, first, I'm going to wipe everything down with acetone. So that way, you know, we'll get rid of all the oils and stuff from the welding and cleaning and cutting and grinding and all that crap. So we, at least we have a somewhat prepared surface. So we'll, I'll go ahead and get all that done and get the first coat of primer paint on it. And then the second coat of paint and the third coat of paint. And then I'll come back right at you once we get the, ready to put the batteries in. My all impressive fume extractor. Yeah, I don't mind the hole in the ceiling. 
little bit of water leak that I still have to attend to. Well, the leak has been fixed, but never mind. Just got to fix the ceiling. So here we go, guys. It is painted. It is done. This is actually the second coat of black paint. Um, I know when I closed out the previous segment, I did not have the battery standoff or the tie down points installed, but they're installed. They did that right before I sprayed everything down with primer red and I'm out of primer red now, so I have to go and get some more. And we got the two final coats of black paint and painted on here now. So everything is pretty much ready to rock and roll. I can see a spot here that I missed. Okay, so I'll have to hit a couple of spots and touch up paint is basically all that's left. Uh, this battery tray is basically done for the most part. Uh, once I close out the video here, I will go ahead and touch that paint up. So yeah, all we gotta do now is just let this dry. I'm gonna let it cure overnight, 24 hours. So that way when I drop the batteries in, they don't rub off any of the paint that's not hardened up yet. And it should give it enough time to harden, at least so when I drop the batteries in, we don't scratch the surface that much. Okay, so the batteries are now installed. They're connected. Battery terminals and cables were all cleaned up. Everything showed to be okay after I cleaned all the terminals up. Uh, I have some spray protectant on the terminals right now. They're all filled with distilled water and topped off. Uh, the pack is not anchored down correctly yet. Okay, so I had to order up some battery tie down posts and that plastic bracket that goes in here between the, the center of the battery pack. Uh, so once that comes in, we'll be able to get that installed and get this thing done and out of here and back to the customer. Um, so what I'll probably do for now is just get it out of here, uh, park it outside and get it charged up so it's done and ready to go. And then I can do a, a check on all the batteries, make sure everything's good there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get the seat on this, get this all installed and get this all done, get it out of here, get it over to storage so we can get it washed up and then back to the customer. But as it is right now, guys, for as far as this cart goes, I'm going to just wrap up this video because it's boring just to watch me pull the battery out and install battery tie downs. I mean, that's that's kind of boring. So I just want to get this thing wrapped up so we can get it edited and uploaded. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Don't forget to ring that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Check the video's description for links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos and leave a comment down below in the comment section under this video. So, all right, guys, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.